पहली बार इस हवा का स्पर्श महसूस कर रहा हूं मैं ऐसा लग रहा है जैसे मेरी आत्मा ने मुझे फ्रेंड रिक्वेस्ट भेजी आज से सारे नशे बंद गाइस क्योंकि तुम्हारे भाई को प्यार का नशा हुआ है एवरीथिंग इन इनिशियल डेज ऑफ रिलेशनशिप फील्स फ्रेश फील्स एलिवेटेड feels like our mood is on the top of the world the lovey dovey vibes life suddenly starts to appear completely differently the butterfly feeling mm the day dreaming about a crush mm i know you are one of those this is the logistics of relationship and precisely how to find a soulmate now first you need to answer one question that what is even a soulmate now according to the normal convention we can really say that someone we can really spend our rest of a life with sexual interest who is really designed for us by this whole supreme universal force for this life or maybe for thousands of lives who knows can be really classified as a soulmate itself but the main question is can soulmate be created now human relationship can be really just classified by this simple acronym called ccl chemistry compatibility and longevity now human relationship really begins when there is certain spark the rush and the feeling when you just get when you just see the person or interact with the person for the first time itself for some people the attraction is not that instantaneous some people really take time to develop attraction but indeed chemistry must be present to create an attraction itself without chemistry the attraction can't be existed over here but to really understand what the chemistry really is and how do we get attracted to some character key characteristics over here we need to just understand what seduction really is Now as I already mentioned in my previous video that everything really depends upon your childhood itself the programming and the upbringing for the first 15 years is really crucial in determining how you are going to live your rest of your life but when it comes to seduction things are really bit more different but first we need to really understand the evolutionary behavior of human nature itself that why men prefer beautiful women itself and why female pick men based on status and resources now what really differentiate men and women in the human species itself the obvious answer is the muscle power now men have the sheer muscle power when it comes to having physical strength itself and as a caveman that really gave them immense ability to go out hunt an animal provide security and food for the family itself since female don't have that muscle power they got engaged in other activity like picking fruits maintaining home nurturing babies etc now you might really ask what does this have to do with the seduction well quite a lot since as a caveman our choices and options were really limited that means even one mistake could be the difference between the death and life and the future of humanity was at stake so naturally evolution really forced us to create an efficient dating strategies so that it could really help us to procreate more efficiently now coming back to the question that why men prefer more beauty the simple answer is Beauty in a female represents the fertility. The more beautiful she is looking, the more it can subconsciously communicate that hey, I'm more fertile. Hey, you can be my husband or you can be my boyfriend. You know, I can produce a healthy offspring. Another sign of fertility is that how female body allocates the fat in her body. Now, estrogen typically stores all the fat in thighs, buttocks, and her breast itself as compared to as testosterone which really stores all the fat in men's belly itself now that really represents that why men also really love big boobs because fat is kind of feel like a symbolic gesture that this female is really like well fed and this woman is perfect that she can really just carry my child she can really just be nourishing to my child itself and can produce a brilliant healthy offspring kim kardashian took the world to the storm when she really managed to balance a wine glass on her butt itself now you really know that why she really got so many engagement there is an evolutionary behavior to that and there is all sorts of really butt fantasies on instagram which you can check it out if you really want looks are the essential part of any female sexuality and a man's weakness is what his eyes really sees because we men are more visual creatures and that is why female spend so much of time in doing the makeup as it heightens their effect and it subconsciously mimic the effect of sex why female really apply the lipsticks because when we really do the sex the blood get pumped in our cheek itself and just make our lips more reddish or more pinkish color itself and it really relaxes our eyelid itself so it really kind of mimics that kind of effect now do i really say that every woman who does the makeup has an intention to go out and lay with any person no i'm not really saying that 
it's as equal and as absurd as saying that all men are rapists, which isn't the true at all. Now let's talk about why females seek status and resources in men. The simple answer is only females can really reproduce. Now naturally we men can't do that, but it's not about reproducing thing. It's about growing human really takes a lot longer time compared to other mammals itself. And during her pregnancy, the female is in the most vulnerable period itself. She really needs protection from all sorts of wild animals and the natural calamity that has been happening around as a caveman itself. And only a strong person could really deliver all of her needs and provide her all of her food, security, shelter and cater the needs of that pregnant woman and her child itself. That really explains that why gold digger pranks also get millions of views on YouTube and why it is also mentioned on the matrimonial side that the groom should really have an XYZ salary. Seduction really involves in bypassing the logical gate and directly targeting the subconscious mind. Chemistry is based on how often you are able to create or bring alive the fantasy of your own partner itself. Now, Robert Greene in his book really talks about so in his book, Art of Seduction really talks about all of the seduction strategy. This book is really highly philosophical and highly scientific in nature. This book really talks about all of the historical references in medieval age about how Casanova was successful, what really made Cleopatra really stand out from all of the women, despite she was really not that beautiful. You can really go on and try to read this. This is really like one of my all time favorite book itself. Now, I mean, this, the title is not been mentioned over here neatly because I have really read it multiple times. But nonetheless, coming back to the point itself, to really understand the female mind and female psyche in terms of sexual conquest, you really need to study all of the romantic novels and romantic movies itself to really understand what really triggers the female most, despite there is nothing more substantial in it. Now, take for example, the all-time favorite female fantasy, which has been loved by hundreds of millions of women online. That is none other than Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey. Not that I'm really saying that all the women who read and watch Fifty Shades of Grey or Twilight is really looking for Edward Cullen or Christian Grey itself. What I'm really saying that by studying all of this movie and all of this pattern, you can pretty much really very well understand that how female mind really works. What triggers the female mind? Since women being more emotional, they need a deep connection. They need to feel. It's not about what do you say them? It's about how you make them feel. Now, if you can really make them feel really good and then you can really design your seduction strategy neatly, you can really make them fall in love with you. Somewhere down the line, I really heard this quote that words are the biggest weakness of any female out there. Now, when I first read that, I didn't record it. I mean, I was questioning that how are words really the biggest weakness of any female? Like how words can really trigger certain kind of things? Then I really came across this Vice article which really says that how he pretended to be a fake poet on Instagram. Later I really saw a bunch of all of the Instagram poets which really shared the cliche thing. I mean it was totally dumb. But nonetheless what was the interesting thing to notice over here was that all of the likes and all of the comments was majority done by the female itself. And if you really see all of the historical figures like Don Quixote or Benjamin Franklin they were really not good looking, but by using the power of words, by crafting the words carefully to that particular subject, they were just able to really woo any woman out there. Now, when it comes to playing hard to get, I really love this blank space from Taylor Swift itself. Cause we are young, we are reckless. We'll take this way too far. It'll leave you breathless or with the nasty scars. Gonna long list of ex lovers and they'll tell you I'm insane. Cause you know I love the place and you love the game. Note that I'm not really saying that you should just know the psychology and try to manipulate that person or use it for your own advantage. That really reflects uh, who you are as a person, what are your ethics and values. And you should always use your knowledge for good purposes. You should not really use it for evil purposes. So what does it tell you? Yes, attraction can be manufactured. Yes, you can make someone fall in love with you. And now you might really say that, hey Rahul, this doesn't really sound that much romantic. And yes, you're right. I don't blame you for that thinking, but maybe what I'm going to tell you the next may sound real romantic over here. So for now, we are done with the chemistry, but chemistry alone can take you just so far ahead. After a long time, after a long period itself, your true colors and true nature does get revealed to the other person. So in terms of long relationship, your chemistry plus the compatibility is really important. Now, when it comes to compatibility, I have my own conversion theory. Now, what that conversion theory really means. Now, take for example, Sun rays have the, all the power to really just melt the hardest material on this earth itself. 
But what is the use when the, all of the rays aren't really converged at a single point? Now, when you use the magnifying glass and converge the sun rays itself, it has the power to burn and melt anything that comes in front of it. Similarly, if you find that you are really madly in love with your crush itself, there must be some of the convergence factor to really come close to each, each other. Let's say if you find your crush to be really attractive, then you might be in college or you might be in office space or you might be anything. But the problem really is that as Gunal Shah says that COVID has forced all relation to be long distance relationship. And when it comes to online dating and let's say Instagram, if you're somewhat on Facebook, if you're somewhat, if you find somewhat friend attractive on that kind of thing, then in that case, figure out to convergence factor to really get to know each other is maybe a little bit of hassle for them itself. But let's say if you really found out to have, let's say go on a date itself, how should you judge both together itself? Now, the thing is that all the person, whether you go to sales team, whether you go to any marketer itself, he would really try to really persuade you to buy his product. Same really happens with the dating itself because when, when you really meet the person for the first time, he or she will try to really be the best version of himself or herself. So you should always really judge them based on their character, based on the long term evaluation itself, based on that what are the values, what are the beliefs, how they really see the world itself. Now, oftentimes we really get to see this comparison between their real life versus their real life. On Instagram, everyone really present their best version of themselves. No one really posts that how depressed they are, how shit their life is and how trauma they are going through. No one really posts the sad days on Instagram. So it's really important to just know that person in real life. And hence, it's important to know that person and know his or her quality in real life itself. For that, you both need to decide how you're going to find your own convergence factor so that you can really strengthen your relationship as well. And this really ends our convergence factor over here. But this is just one of the many aspects in compatibility itself. Let's say your career goal, your spiritual goal, your lifestyle and your mindset should really match together. Let's say if I really want to go and travel to the world for photography and travel journalism and do all sort of adventure stuff. But my crush really wants to go to army and go to join the air force itself. Now, both of them having a really clash together. Not that I'm not really saying that LDR can't work or long distance ship can't work, but there is somewhat a clash over here. Now, oftentimes you really see that a doctor really marries with the doctor or the doctor itself. The reason is why they're, they're both have gone through similar condition. They have, they know what the stress of doctoring is. And that kind of really makes them a perfect match together, at, at least in terms of the normal conventions. Now, it's really not that necessary that you should really go on and be in relationship with the person which has exactly the same qualification. Let's say if you are in commerce, then you should really date with the commerce person itself. Human relation comes with all sort of different permutations and combination. And talking about compatibility, you might really experience breakup in some sort of form itself. Now, breakup really sucks and everyone knows that. But why breakup really sucks so much and why it is so heartbreaking? First, we need to understand what sex really does to our body itself. When we are really engaging in the most pleasurable activity, our body releases various sort of chemical which makes our mind to develop an emotional polarity towards that person. Think of it in perspective of magnetizing an iron rod. Now, an iron rod typically has no magnetic power in attracting any iron filing. But once you really expose that iron rod in an electrical coil for a considerable amount of time, it will really induce a magnetism itself. But now the problem really is that once it is really induced magnetically, it is really hard to really demagnetize it again. Relationship is exactly the same. Our mind produces an emotional polarity towards that person. Once that emotional polarity has been developed, coming back to the initial point is really difficult in that case itself. And that really explains that why breakup really sucks. Now, if you have really decided that this person should be really my soulmate for the rest of my life, in that case, you need to figure out the longevity itself because love alone doesn't fill your stomach and you need to figure out the shit that comes with the relationship as well. Like managing your finance, managing your expectation, managing your career, managing your needs and desires and managing your all sort of crazy thing that really comes with the relationship. The problem with our generation is that we have a lot of demands and expectation from ourselves and what we really want to do but the problem really is that our expectation and reality doesn't really match together to really demonstrate what what i'm trying to say over here is that let's take an example of our previous generation which is from 1950 1970 or 1990 itself during that period 
the average income was not that high. What that really meant was that even if you had low wages, you could perfectly live your life really comfortably at ease. And if you were even struggling in your career, that was considered to be a good sign. And people really married off quickly in that early 20s itself. And considering today, people are really getting married in the 30, 35 age itself because as unemployment is really high. The problem with our generation is that we had a lot of crazy expectation that a girl should really look in this way. We should have a lot of lavish lifestyle. Let's say the uh, groom should have X, Y, Z of resources and amount. And I really think that we are kind of really hitting an unrealistic expectation because our expectation can be anything. We can, we really want to own an anti light itself, but our action really doesn't match our expectation. What I'm really trying to say is that our parents really experienced the economic boom of 1990 liberalization, due to which they were able to buy the house. They were, they were able to fulfill their needs and desires sufficiently. That isn't the case with us because even one lakh salary in today's age is not really enough and you can't really buy a house with one lakh as in salary itself. That will take decades to fulfill. The real reason of unemployment of what I generally feel is because of following factors. Consider this following scenario. I am 15 years of age old. Uh, my father really earns well. I have broadband and geo connection which really offers me unlimited data. I have my own phone. Now you really tell me that if I can really just give my all of my attention to Reels, Instagram and also kind of these short things which really is pleasuring, which really triggers my dopamine itself. And I know that my financial, con my family's financial condition is really well good. Why should I really struggle so much in creating my own life where for now, I'm really able to get all of the luxuries and all of the comfort that I'm really getting right now. Then why should I really struggle? Why should I think about in future as well? And this is exactly what I think the problem of various millennial generation really is. When it comes to longevity, the female career is really important topic because fertility window is a real thing and female can only get pregnant in just certain amount of time frame. Let's say from 20 to 35 max max pulling up to 40 years itself. You have just a fertility window of 20 years itself. If you really exceed that window, your chances of getting pregnant is really less. So for female, it's kind of really like a tough question because when should I really get pregnant? How should I really manage my career? If I have my career aspiration, and if I really got married to someone, how should I really manage all of the expectation? And this is even the tough problem that I don't have an answer to this question because some people are able to really manage it well while some people really say that, hey, my husband is really earning well. I might stay at home and really just take care of my baby cell and really help him to nurture his character and really just help him to become a better person, which is totally fine. I'm not complaining about the priorities of the women here. I'm just saying that even I'm really confused that what should be done over here because now even if I really think that, hey, I really want to go with this person, I want to be in relationship with this person, I really don't know what is the career aspiration of that person and what the future would look like. Since our ego really loves to be in control, our, our mind really wants to predict the future. It's kind of really uncertain and you both should really discuss together what are your career aspirations and how should you really tackle this problem in case if you really want to go in the long term relationship, if you really want to marry together itself. People really say that they want to get along with the person which has XYZ quality itself. But in reality, you might have seen a lot of people who actually end up with a different person that they really say that they want to be with. This happens a lot of time because we humans are really hypocritical teacher as well. And the thing that I really explained that we are really driven subconsciously. We don't have a control about our subconscious mind and things really need to be balanced over here. Our emotion and our logic must be balanced together. At least I think that you can really keep 60% emotion and 40% logic or 70% emotion or 30% logic. There must be an always balance between an emotion and the logic as well over here. So that's it. This was our video on how to find a soulmate. Maybe I didn't talk about how to find soulmate. Maybe I have really made you a lot of confused. This was what I really wanted to say. Now, although seduction, relationship, compatibility is a really long topic and I can talk all day along itself. But since really YouTube really constrained me to really keep my video short, otherwise not a lot of people will really watch that video a long time for itself. So till then, if you have any comments, if you have any feedback, if you have any suggestion that what could be really improved, what could be more better next time itself, please let me know in the comment box below or you can really reach out to me to my all the social handles which is linked in the description so stay connected stay subscribed and i'll see you next time